Hey guys, I'm Colin Heldens here at Rolling Loud Studios, Miami, Florida. Welcome to my Mixed with Mega session. Today we'll go over a song I mixed by Maniac Sounds called Living Fast. Let's jump in. Yeah. Just give me a hot girl, someone need a hot boy. I'm heating up a spot to the pop boy. Boss man team, real top boy. They don't talk fast, they just talk noise. So this is the session for Maniac Sounds Living Fast. As you can see, it's not an overly big session. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a little bit of the song and then I'll go section by section explaining what I did and why I did it. Just give me a hot girl, someone need a hot boy. I'm heating up a spot to the pop boy. Boss man team, real top boy. They don't talk fast, they just talk noise. Too blessed, I don't care what the rich say. Too fly to be touched on their best day. Too hot, my catch flame. Live life, then move to the next day. Living fast. Push this life shit to the max, I'm trying not to crash. So let me start off with the background vocals up top over here. So the background vocals, I gave them a little bit of tuning because I felt like they could use some additional tuning than what was given to me. And I did a little bit of EQ and compression and de -essing. So let me show you what I did on the crispy tuner. So as you could see, there's just a little bit of tuning going on. Now on the subgroup for the background vocals, I have the Amec 9099 channel strip and I'm just removing a little bit of low end to make him much more blended to the background, less low end rumble that's happening there. I gave him a little bit more width so that the lead vocal is sitting more in the center versus the background vocal so they embraced the vocal on the sides. Gave him a little bit of compression and some EQ strokes. I removed a little bit of high end and I removed a little bit of body that's on there as well as for the proximity effect I shelved out a little bit of low end. So let me play it with the EQ on and then I'll play it with it off. So what I felt was that the S's are coming through a little bit too strong still. So I added in the DSR from SPL to remove some more of the S's. As you could hear with the DSR in, it's much more of a smoother vocal versus without it. Moving on to the lead vocals, let me solo part of the lead vocal so you can hear how it sounds like processed and then I'll go plug-in by plug-in and showcase you guys what I did and why I did it. My life changes such a flash, sometimes I can't relax. Wish it out of pocket, I just jump back in my bag. Again, what I did is I gave it a little bit of tuning just because I wanted to smoothen it out a little bit. So I'll play it with and then without. My life changes such a flash, sometimes I can't relax. Wish it out of pocket, I just jump back in my bag. My life changes such a flash, sometimes I can't relax. Wish it out of pocket, I just jump back in my bag. My life changes such a flash, sometimes I can't relax. Wish it out of pocket, I just jump back in my bag. So the effect is very minimum, but you can hear that the vocal is slightly a little bit more smoother than it was without the tuning. So after the tuning, I inserted another instance of the MEC 9099 channel strip and did fairly the same thing as I did on the background vocals. So I removed a some, some low end here, uh, not overly too much, just enough so that there's no low end boom coming in from the mic stands or the proximity effect, any sort of low end bumps that we don't wanna have. I uh, didn't give it any width because again, it's lead vocal. I like to have that solo sitting in the center. Did a little bit of compression on there and then I gave it some EQ strokes. And again, what I did on the high end is I removed some high end because I thought these vocals were overly too bright. So I dialed it down a little bit and I removed a little bit of body because I felt that there was a little bit too much body in the low mid range happening that could use some help by smoothing out a little bit 
And again, for the proximity effect, I shelved out a little bit of low end to make it much more smoother. Now, this might seem like a big, big cut that I made rolling off about 6 dB, but I'm gonna make up for that with my parallel compression technique that I'm using, which I will show after this. My life changes such a flash, sometimes I can't relax. Wish it out of pocket, I just jump back in my bag. My life changes such a flash, sometimes I can't relax. Wish it out of pocket, I just jump back in my bag. My life changes such a flash, sometimes I can't relax. Wish it out of pocket, I just jump back in my bag. And the same as with the background vocals, what I felt was that the S's, the sibilants, came through a little too much. I had to tame them as well. So I used the SPL DSR on the lead vocals as well. After that, I still felt that there was more of like the F's and the S, like the, the consonants happening there that were peaking a little too much. So I used the Brainworks dynamic EQ to tame them a little bit more to gain more control over the vocal. So I'll play the vocal with the plugin enabled and the plugin disabled so you can hear the differences. So this is with the plugin enabled. My life changes such a flash, sometimes I can't relax. Wish it out of pocket, I just jump back in my bag. My life changes such a flash, sometimes I can't relax. Wish it out of pocket, I just jump back in my bag. My life changes such a flash, sometimes I can't relax. Wish it out of pocket, I just jump back in my bag. So that's how I treated the lead vocals. What I did do though is I gave it a parallel compression chain with it that I used. So this is the vocal with the parallel chain enabled. My life changes such a flash, sometimes I can't relax. Wish it out of pocket, I just jump back in my bag. My life changes such a flash, sometimes I can't relax. Wish it out of pocket, I just jump back in my bag. My life changes such a flash, sometimes I can't relax. Wish it out of pocket, I just jump back in my bag. So as you could hear, the vocal became much more prominent with the parallel compression enabled, but less prominent when I took it out. And that's one of the reasons why we would use it. So what did I do in a parallel chain? Well, I compressed it heavily with the MC77 limiter, and I followed it up with the channel 80, where I basically added in a ton of low end to smoothen out the vocal to lift it. So that's why we use parallel compression for this instance. So having done the vocals, let's move on to the basses that are in this session and I'll play them. So I have a bass in the verse. Just a regular 808. We have another different toned 808 for the pre-chorus. followed by yet another 808 with a synth bass for the hooks. So I didn't do a whole lot on the basses. For instance, didn't do anything on the 808 fuzzy. Felt there was nothing wrong with it. The only thing that I inserted on there is the NSSL channel, the 4000, and I used the brown up EQ because it has much more of a pool techie vibe, that low endy, nice richness. So what I did is I just used it purely for coloration. So nothing is happening on this plugin except it just ran through it for the color. On the 808 short, I added in a little bit of 220 just to give it a little bit more punch. So I'll play with that. And then what I will do is I'll take the plugin out and enable it again so you can hear the difference. So this is width. As you could hear, that low end boost was necessary to bring out that 808 much more and make it more in line with the other 808s that are playing throughout the song. So on the sub bass, similar story as the very first 808, didn't do anything on there, just used the SSL as a coloration tool. And then we have a synth bass, whereby did the exact same thing as the sub bass and the 808 fuzzy, purely used for coloration. So let me show you guys the parallel chain that I used on the 808s.
So what did I do? Basically, I roll off anything below 90 hertz because I don't want to have the low end being distorted because it's not a nice sound, plus it will take away the punch from the 808. Then I added the Stompbox, the Green Screamer, which added some tube saturation to it. So I changed the tone to a fairly bright tone. And the reason why I put distortion on the 808 and not just full spectrum, only the top end is because it will lift the 808 out of the mix when we are playing it back on smaller speakers. Think laptop speakers, phone speakers, any such type of speakers that are smaller that really can't reproduce any low end. This is a great track to use on them. So that's what I did on the 808. Let's move on to the drums. And let me solo the drums and showcase you guys what I did on the drums. Most things I do on drums is parallel compression. So in this case, the same thing. Let's start off with the kick. On the kick itself, put the SSL, brown up, similar story as the 808s. Doesn't anything happening on here. It's just purely used for the non-linearity. It's just the coloration of the console that I liked on the drums. And then I send a parallel out to parallel kick drum, which I'm using these two plugins for. And basically the trick here is to lift the kick out of the mix more to make it more low and heavy without changing the overall tone of the original kick drum. So let me play the kick back with the parallel chain activated and then again without it activated so you can hear the two differences. So outside of it getting a little bit louder, what happens is it's more defined in the low end. So I'm going pretty heavy on the compression here on the Alicia compressor, knocking off about 10 dB, fairly quick attack with a fairly quick release time. So it really grabs the kick drum and compresses it all the way down. So it's one chunk of kick drum. And then I'm adding a ton of low end in there with the better maker EQ and I rolled off a ton of the high end so that at the end of the day, I get a really low ball sounding kick drum that gets blended in with the original kick drum so that it lifts it out of the mix. We have a full kick drum that hits harder and is more prominent. Having done that on the kick drum, let me solo the snare, the clap and the rim shots that are in here so that you can hear how they sound and I'll showcase you guys what I did on those. So let's start off with the snare. Not a whole lot happening on there, inserted the SSL EQ. What you can see is that I added a slight little bit of low mid-range on the snare. As you can hear, it's really, really little. It's like a hair of more body that gets introduced to the snare using the SSL 4000. So let's move on and see what I did on the clap. Nothing happening on the clap as much as EQ or dynamics go. Again, just using the SSL channel strip for some coloration. Then on the first rim, I'm using some EQ from the SSL. So it's just one little rim shot. So as you could hear, it was a very thin sounding rim shot. Adding in a little bit of that low mid really brought the rim shot more to the forefront. That body really helped to make it cut through through the mix, especially with the dense drums that are sitting there. So on the second rim shot, instead of adding it, I'm removing some body. So let me play that. As you could hear, it's subtle, but it's helping the rim be less prominent, less body with the rest of the drums that are sitting there. 
so I cleaned it up a tad bit. So the other thing I did on the snare clap and the rim shots was parallel compression, similar as to what I did to the vocals and the kick drum. This instance, I'm using the 50 series plugin to compress the snare, the clap and the rims really compact and add some EQ to add some body, some mid range and remove some high end so we can lift it out more in the mix and bring it more into your face. So again, outside of it becoming a little bit more louder, it also gained more body and presence in your face, which is really desirable for hip hop records like this to bring the drums out more and make them more aggressive. So moving on to the hi-hats of the session, there's not much happening here. I inserted the Amec 9099 channel, basically just for the richness that it has, just purely by coloration. So nothing is happening on here. Same goes for all the other channels. All these hi-hats are just being used to give some coloration using the Amec 9099 channel strip. So those are the drums. Let's move on to the synth chords that are used on this song and showcase you guys what I did. So what did I do on the synth chords? I added the Amec 9099 channel strip on both of them. Originally I did some EQ moves, but eventually decided on that I did not like the EQ moves I made and that it sounded fine by itself. That's why you see them on here, but without these EQs in. So basically what's happening here now is I'm using the Amec 9099 purely for color. So let me play you the sync chords back with the plugins enabled and then without the plugins enabled and with the plugins enabled again so you can hear what's going on. Then there are these green tracks that are basically just effect tracks, which again, I didn't do anything on except for inserting the Amec 9099, just purely to get some of that analog glue feel grit going. So having gone over the majority points of this mix session, let me showcase you guys what I actually did on the master channel. So let me play the hook and then showcase you guys what I did per plugin. So let me pull the plugins up and let me play back a little bit of the song with the plugins on the mix bus enabled. You can start your own way, dog, man, all it takes is flash. Always tell your truth and always, always speak your facts. So when they talk your shit, man, you can't do nothing but laugh. So basically what I'm doing is I'm gluing it a little bit here with the VSC2 compressor, which is a VCA compressor. So it reacts fairly quickly. It's very snappy, which I like. I like to basically start compressing the kicks a little bit, the drums a little bit, so that the rest of the mix gets brought up slightly. So we get a nice condensed control record. Let me play this back with the compressor disabled and then again with the compressor enabled. You can start your own way, dog, man. All it takes is flash. Always tell your truth and always, always speak your facts. So when they talk your shit, man, you can't do nothing but laugh. Yeah. You can start your own way, dog, man. All it takes is flash. Always tell your truth and always, always speak your facts. So when they talk your shit, man, you can't do nothing but laugh. You can start your own way, dog, man, all it takes is flash. Always tell your truth and always, always speak your facts. So when they talk your shit, man, you can't do nothing but laugh. Yeah. As you can hear, it glued it, really. Without the compressor, you could hear that it's much more of loose elements versus with the compressor in, where it felt much more as one cohesive record. Moving on to plugin number two, which is the HG2 from Blackbox. And basically what it does is it adds some color and I wanted some more color in the mid-range, so much more 
in your face sounding. So let me play this back with the HG2 enabled, then with the HG2 disabled, and again enabled, so you can hear the differences. You can start your own way, dog, man. All it takes is flash. Always tell your truth and always, always speak your facts. So when they talk your shit, man, you can't do nothing but laugh. Yeah. You can start your own way, dog, man. All it takes is flash. Always tell your truth and always, always speak your facts. So when they talk your shit, man, you can't do nothing but laugh. You can start your own way, dog, man, all it takes is flash Always tell your truth and always, always speak your facts So when they talk your shit, man, you can't do nothing but laugh As you could hear, the mix went from sounding good to really being lifted out and in your face More prominent, more exciting So after the HD2, I followed it up with a little bit of EQ, which we have right here Which is the Brainworks Digital V3. And what I did here is I made use of both the mono and the stereo section. So on the stereo section, I liked the record to have slightly a little bit more brilliance than was brought out during the HD2 process. And I wanted to enhance on the mono section the kick drum a bit more and the 808. So I boosted a little bit of the low end as well. So let me play this back with the EQ enabled then with the EQ disabled, and again with EQ enabled. Hey, you can start your own way, dog, man, all it takes is flash. Always tell your truth and always, always speak your facts. So when they talk your shit, man, you can't do nothing but laugh. Hey, you can start your own way, dog, man, all it takes is flash. Always tell your truth and always, always speak your facts. So when they talk your shit, man, you can't do nothing but laugh. Hey, you can start your own way, dog, man. All it takes is flash. Always tell your truth and always, always speak your facts. So when they talk your shit, man, you can't do nothing but laugh. So as you could hear with the EQ enabled is that Basically, the mix got enhanced a little bit in the high end, so it became a little bit more expensive. And because of the low end, it became much more of a prominent rap record. So last thing in the chain that I'm using is the Brainworks True Peak Limiter. Now I've set it to minus four because if it's going to mastering, I want to give the mastering engineer some headroom that he can do his job. There's a few cool features on here like foundation where I can enhance a little bit of the low end back in because when stuff gets compressed or limited it always feels like a little bit of the low end and high ends get chopped off. So this is a great way of adding it back in. So let me play this back with the true peak limiter enabled, then disabled and again enabled so you can hear the differences. Hey, you can start your own way dog man, all it takes is flash. Always tell your truth and always, always speak your facts. So when they talk your shit, man, you can't do nothing but laugh. Yeah. Hey, you can start your own way, dog, man. All it takes is flash. Always tell your truth and always, always speak your facts. So when they talk your shit, man, you can't do nothing but laugh. Yeah. Hey, you can start your own way, dog, man. All it takes is flash. Always tell your truth and always, always speak your facts. So when they talk your shit, man, you can't do nothing but laugh. And that's it. Thank you for joining my Mix with Mega session. You can download the stems or the sessions from the Plugin Alliance website. Let's have some fun.